Monty Burrell, and you're checking out your music, My World Zach. To the people who are new to you, how do you explain your sound? Um, man, my sound is a, is a mixture of, of a few things. You know, my inspirations growing up, um, people like Jodeci and R. Kelly and Brian McKnight, Michael Jackson. And you got Tank that I've always studied since I was, you know, since I was like 18. But <clears throat> So it's like a mixture of all of those people. Of course, Stevie Wonder, Bob and Gay. So I took a little, you know, some, some from all of those people. have you been performing? Uh, I got my start in music um, singing background for a lot of people. I actually started out as a church kid and, you know, doing, you know, singing with different people like Johnny McClurkin and John P. Key and Kim Burrell and Clark Sisters. And then I, I ventured out and um, started singing background for a lot of R&B acts. You know, Mario, um, Kelly Rowland, Ruben Stutter when he first won American Idol. Jamie Foxx, uh, the list goes on, Brandy, Casey, and JoJo. And um, so I, I started singing background for all these people, and when I finally wanted to start doing music for myself, um, <laughs> when you're first starting out, it's hard to get tracks from certain producers and writers, so I, I just started writing on my own. And, and I had some family members like Charlie Burrell, who was a producer, and Kenny Burrell um, to work with. They had their own studio at their house. I used to go up there every day and just stay there. And I just started writing for myself. Writing the Chinese beats and just grooming my pen. And uh, when it got to a certain level, Tank took me under his wing. Shout out to Tank. And I started writing with him. And he actually got me my first placement on Dave Hollister's Real Talk album. And from there, you know, once you get in the game and people start, you know, seeing your name on stuff, they start calling you for more stuff. And Tank kept, you know, putting me on different other projects that he was a part of. You know, Please Don't Go came about. We, we worked on Jamie Foxx's Unpredictable uh, together. And so from there, um, I started and catapulted my career as a songwriter. As well as, you know, all the people that I had sang background for, once they said, Lonnie, you right now? I said, yeah. So it wasn't hard to get my music to the artist that I had sang with because I had developed relationships. So that's how I got in the game. And the rest is history, you know. Was it always your intention to become an artist when you first started writing and producing? Hey, yeah, when I first started writing and producing, I wanted to do my own music. And, um, and you know, I have meetings and start running into, you know, some adversity and seeing what I need to work on. And while I was grooming myself as an artist and just developing myself, I said, well, let me, you know, start writing for other people while I'm developing myself, you know, just, just to stay, you know, hot and relevant and, and get my name known out there. And then when I'm ready, you know, for my own thing, then, you know, I can do that. What do you enjoy more, being the performer or songwriting and producing? Um, I, I enjoy being the performer because I just love being on stage. I come from, from performance, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's always fun to, to create in the studio. Sometimes it's a quick process, sometimes it's a long process. But nothing like being on stage and feeling that energy from people screaming or looking at people in the face and they're just like screaming and singing your lyrics that you that you've taken the time out to you know to work hard in the studio and just that energy you know grabbing people's hands being able to hug some of these women out there that 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 love my music and support me and you know it's nothing like that. Well, how did your signing with Conglomerate Records come about? Um, that actually came about, me and Buster, shout out to Buster Rhymes, me and Buster, um, we linked up, we've always seen each other in past and we've always spoke to each other, you know, at different events where we, where we chilled and, you know, we just had a good time, but it actually came about when Buster called on Jamie Foxx to be a part of this new album that he's working on now, Extinction Level Event 2, uh, and Jamie called me, and was like, 
I know your style, and I know when niggas is taking your swag and your style. He said, it's time for you to do your own thing, Playboy. Like, I'm tired of people holding you back and, you know, trying to keep you under wraps so that they can be hot and relevant. He said, it's time for you to do your thing. And you, and you don't, he said, I'm not intimidated by you because I'm a hip-hop artist, so in no way can you step on my toes. I just want to help you get out there. And so, you know, the paperwork went back and forth, and, and I'm a part of the conglomerate now. So tell us more about your um, new single, Don't Play With It. Don't Play With It. It actually came, wow, well, Don't Play With It is something that I was actually holding for, um, I was going to put it on Love Games Part 2. Mm-hmm. And I had put Love Games Part 1 out and everybody was loving it. And I said, okay, I'm going to hit everybody over the head real hard with Love Games Part 2. And um, so I sent the song to Buster. Buster was actually upset with me a little bit for Love Games Part 1 because I, he wasn't a part of it. And so, he, you know, he called me and was like, yo, play, but I'm not happy with this, man. How you going to put the Love Games Part 1 mixtape out, this and that? And I said, well, Buster, I got you, man. Let's do let's do part two. And he was like, Nah, fuck that. We gotta do a song right now and put and put it out because I'm I'm not happy about this. So I said, All right, cool. I got a song that I was gonna hold for Love Games Part Two. I'm gonna send to you. So I sent it to him. He got on it, and I had already planned on Chris Brown being a part of that record. So once I got Buster's verse, I took it to Chris because me and Chris were working on his Fame and Fortune album. And so I just popped it in in one of the sessions. I said, yo, CB, listen to this. I need you to get on the second verse. So he's like, all right, cool, let me hear it. So he, I played it, and he loved it so much. He was like, you got the session on you? I said, yeah, I got it. He said, let's, let's do it now. And so he knocked it out in like 10 minutes. And I sent it back to Buster. He was tripping out. He's like, yo, man, this joint is crazy. So he make, he had it mixed and mastered, and then he, he, he just put it out. He leaked it out there. Shout out to Funkmaster Flex. He, he debuted it on his his radio show as well as his website. And Hot 97 was the first radio station to debut it as, as well as Rap Radar uh, posted it first online. And now it's just spreading like wildfire. And, you know, the, the, I'm loving the feedback. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm I'm just overwhelmed with what's going on with that record now. And we're looking forward to shooting the video real soon. Chris Brown came up with the uh, treatment. And so... Um, it's, it's spread like wildfire, and I, I hope it keeps going. You know, hopefully we can release it to iTunes real soon and get this video done. So what what can fans t- um, expect to hear on your debut album, Love Train? Man, they can expect to hear Baby making music again. You know, it's, Love Train is one of them records, it's one of those albums that goes through every, um, every episode of Love. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's a bad episode or a good one. But, um, Definitely either going to want to be loved, give love, or feel love, you know, just, just listening to this Love Train album. And, you know, I really came up with the concept of, of Love Train, just, you know, if we all stay connected through love, then we can just keep this movement going. You know, we can move together. And so um, it's definitely a baby-making album. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's got some classic stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Well, who are you working with on the album as far as, like, songwriters and producers and guest features? Uh, definitely working with Jado. Jado is, like, an up-and-coming writer. He wrote Damage for uh, Danny DeCain, mm-hmm. as well as he's on the uh, genuine, the new Genuine album that just came out. Uh, he did some stuff on there with me, as well as the Jamie Foxx album. He's one of the top up-and-coming writers, so he's done a lot of stuff with me on there. And of course, Tank. Um I'm doing some stuff with, I'm getting ready to do a song with, with me, Tank and Trey songs. Um, Buster, of course, is a part. And I got some, I got some stuff from, um, uh, C4 is a new up and coming producer. He is dope. He did Don't Play With It. Uh, Oak is a producer that I've been working with, another big producer that I love his, his music. And so, um, that's pretty, you know, there's a couple, maybe a couple more producers that I'm going to work with. Me and Polo just talked the other day. I'm going to make one with him. And, and Brian Cox, of course, I'm not, I can't close the album without him getting a part. But um, I'm going to keep keep the producers down because I'm trying to create a sound. Mm-hmm. I don't want my, my album all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm gonna, I want to take it back, you know, back in the day where, where artists used to go in with maybe three or four producers and create this sound, and it all matches, you know, versus... You know, having a different producer on every track. Well, when can fans expect Love Games Part Two and Love Train to be out? Um, we're working on. We're having meetings now about this Love Train album. 
And um, shout out to Eric Hutchins as well. He did a, a smash on Love Train. Um, I, I, I've been asking people. I kind of go off of what the fans want. I go on Twitter. I go on my Facebook. I say, okay, what do y'all want? Y'all want a Love Train album first or you want Love Games Part 2? Everybody's asking for the Love Train album. So we're having meetings about that. You know, got to go through the politics of, of the music industry. And uh, me and Buster, we, we put it together. We finalizing the album and, you know, taking songs off and keeping, picking what songs to keep. And, well, hopefully, I'm, I'm thinking maybe like the top of fall we can get this Love Train album out. Uh, I'm going to drop another single as well as the Don't Play With It video. And we'll drop another single after that and keep the bonds going. And then, uh, you know, after that, I'll, I'll give people the, the uh, Love Games Part 2 album. All the artists you work with, who did you learn from the most, whether it be something technical or a life lesson? Man, um, I learned the most musically from Tank. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he's been like a big brother and a mentor to me since the beginning. But uh, I get a lot of life lessons from, from Jamie. Like he just has a lot of wisdom and he's been through a lot. So when I go through anything personally, like, he's my mentor for that. Like, I I have different mentors for different things, you know what I'm saying, that I get, I get things from. And technically, working with Trey Songz in the studio, he's, he's shown me a lot, like, just what I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? And he's so self-contained, and I have a new respect for him. And he's like a, like a brother to me as well. So I get different things, you know, from the different people around me. And then my, my, the woman... That I, that's like a mentor to me, like a sister to me, is Kelly Rowland. Like me and her are very close and we talk all the time. So it's just, I have different people that I get different things from. Well, have you ever written a song that did, for another artist that did very successful and just think like, damn, maybe I should have just kept that for myself? Um, I, I, I really love the song I did for Jamie on the Intuition album called Overdose. Mm-hmm. I wish I would have kept that. Um, but most of the time, a lot of the songs that are that are out there, um, they're songs that I've created with the artist right there. I love Pleasure P. Under. I wish I could have kept that. But that was something that he asked for on the spot, and we created that right on the spot, like a tailor-made suit for him. Um, please don't go, of course. I wish I could have had that for myself. But that was something that I created with Tank in the studio. So a lot of times when you tell, I tell you I make suits for these artists. Well, I saw you um, perform at, with Tank at SOBs, and when he gave you all that spotlight, and, like, after receiving all the love that the people were giving you, does that make you more confident that you can really be a successful solo artist? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, I've had some, some, some points in my life uh, while, while singing background for different people where I just, you know, maybe I should just be a songwriter. Maybe I should just keep, you know, singing background and not really ever come out. But it's when I go out and do these shows uh, with different artists, and, and I've had the luxury of every artist that I've sung with. They all, they all want want to put me in the front and showcase me from, you know, Kelly Rowland to to uh, Tank and Jamie and everybody. I always want to give, you know, give Lottie a little bit of their stage, even Monica and um. And so after the shows, you know, people will come up to me and want to take pictures and want autographs. And people say, when is your stuff coming out? You're so amazing. I enjoyed you. And, you know, you are a highlight in the show. And so over the years, I've had so many people come up to me and say, you know, give me these great compliments. And I said, well, maybe maybe I should go ahead and give the people what they want. So it definitely builds the confidence and it just makes me feel like, okay. I can, I can do this. I'm going to do this. Well, we saw that you were working with Kelly Rowland on her new album. Can you give us a little insight on that and what fans can expect from Kelly's new album? Like this Man, album. you know, well, Kelly has a, a really new sound, a new fresh sound. She's in a, a new place in her life. Mm-hmm. And she's finding that great mixture between dance and just R&B. Um, she, she, it's, a new, it's a new Kelly Rowland. And she's not going to let you down at all. She's got some great music from Rico Love, some great music from Esther Dean. You know, me and her work together. You got the David Guetta, and just, you know, uh, Nelly's a part of it. And she's got some some new producers she's working with, you know, that, that she's going to put out there. You know, she, she she's putting a, it's a well-put-together album. 
and I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing that that the final of that project. You know, she has a lot of songs to choose from, but um, it's her first sound. You're definitely going to dance to some of her music, and she's got some great uh, some great ballads that that have an electro sound to it. That, you know, it's, it's a new first sound. It's a new Kelly Rowland. Well, we know that you um collaborated with Seven from Rich Girl on both Chris Brown mixtapes. Is there any chance that you'll be working on Mix um, Rich Girl's debut album? Um, yeah, actually, me and Chris have gone in with them, and we're gonna go back in with them and, and see, you know, see what happens. Seven is she's incredible, like mm-hmm. she's she's an alien. I like to say, there's, there's not too many people I say that about. I think the only other person is Beyonce and Lil Wayne. Seven is an alien. Um, she, I, I have a great time working with Rich Girl. Okay? Well, what other artists are you cur- currently working with? Um, working with Pleasure P. Um, just finishing up the Chris Brown album. Um, still working on closing Buster's album and doing some stuff with Britney Spears. And uh, getting ready to go in with, with Neo. And that's pretty much it. I'm trying to keep everything down because i got to really finish this Love Train album. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're going in with Jordan Sparks. That's just pretty much it right now. You know, whoever else called, I haven't looked at the schedule. I'm really horrible with my schedule. <laughs> but uh, there's some stuff, some stuff in the works. Well, will you do? Will be doing any promo tours for um, Love Train? Yeah, of course. Um, I'm talking with Kenny now, and, and just you know, we want to start doing some college stuff. So, and uh, you know, just hollering at a few different promoters and seeing what other shows I can get on, as well as you know. Trey was talking about doing another tour after the, after he's done with this Oh My God tour. And I said, well, I'm going with you, bro. He said, well, no, you need to open up. So, you know, I'll possibly be on tour with him opening up. And I'm, you know, just looking forward to doing some more stuff with Tank. And Jamie wants me to open up for him. So we're going to figure it out, man. I'm, I'm working on trying to clone myself so I can do it up. Besides the mixtape, what else can fans see coming from you in the upcoming months? Would you believe? 